Today on DJ Essentials, we're going to learn about hot cues and how you can come up with a consistent system that will make mixing a whole lot easier. One of you guys down in the comments asked me to create an episode about hot cues, and here I am delivering on a very important aspect of DJ. To jump straight into it, most DJ controllers will have eight performance pads available, but at minimum having four pads that you can use for hot cues will make DJing a whole lot easier. When coming up with hot cues, it's really important to come up with a consistent system that you will follow for every track you analyze in your DJ software. What I mean by that is that each hot cue, either by its position or color, will represent a certain function. On the right here, I've already set up a track with the typical hot cues I like to set. And on the left here is a track that has just been analyzed with no hot cues done. Today, what I'm gonna break down is my system for hot cues and the steps I take to set up a completely brand new song according to that system. So of my eight performance pads, you can see that seven has been used up for this song. But typically for me, four to six of these performance pads are reserved for specific sections of a song. First performance pad labeled in red in my software is for the first break. When I wanna jump around with my hot cues, I kinda of wanna get right into the action as soon as possible. So instead of starting from the intro, I like to start from the first breakdown, which is right here. The second hot cue, labeled in blue and titled build, is for the first buildup in the song, which is typically right before the drop. I typically use this hot cue when I'm transitioning if I want to start my song right at the buildup to get a nice quick transition into the next drop. Once I start with my mixing point or if I'm in a loop for my exiting track, I just typically hit the build hot cue and I have enough room to build up and transition into the drop. The third hot cue, labeled drop one, is, for, is pretty self-explanatory, it's for the drop. And an interesting part about this song is that I have two hot cues for drop. Because the first drop is kind of like a faux drop in a sense, where it is the main chorus of the song, but later on, another chorus has a lot more energy to it. Labeling and having both hot cues for each of those sections can really help me out. You can tell this is a little mellowed out track. It's nice and chill. And the second hot cue, right below it, I like to typically put it. A lot more energy in this drop, so if I'm transitioning, I might want to go into this drop, depending on the type of vibe I'm going for with the transition. If I want to bring things down slightly, I can build up and go into the more softer drop. But if I want to keep the energy going, or if I want to really build up the energy, going into the second drop will really help. The last hot cue for the top row is for the second break. The second breakdown of the track typically happens after the first chorus or drop, and it really brings down the energy and prepares for the next build up into the second drop. So just with these four hot cues already, we already have a really good system to jump around the track a lot. Instead of having to wait through the intro, wait for the first breakdown, the buildup, and the drop. If I wanted to go right from the buildup to the drop, I can. Let's say the track is playing right here and I wanna go to the buildup a little bit early after this phrase. Well, I can. I can jump right to that buildup with a press of the button. Another thing that's important to enable with hot cues is to enable quantization in your DJ software. There's some use cases where turning off quantization might be better, but what quantization really is, it takes away that strict timing you have to make when you trigger a hot cue on a beat. You have to be exact with your timing to a degree, but depending on how strict or loose you set the quantization, you have a bit of wiggle room to hit the cue button and it will automatically snap to a beat. To enable quantization in Rekordbox, it's right beside the platter icon on a corresponding deck labeled in this little cue. To further delve into the settings on how you want the snapping of the quantization to affect the track, you hit the cogwheel up here, you go to controller and you go to others. And right here, you can set the level of quantization for each sort of input. For hot cues, I like to set it for a quarter beat. While for loops, I like to set it for a full beat. So that's the first row down. The second row, I typically reserve for other additional features that can vary from track to track. Two of these features are most likely to find in my system, that being the second drop, which I've already mentioned before, and an outro loop. Now we've already talked about auto looping before in an earlier tutorial, and I've 
spoken already that I use it quite a bit. So the last reserve hot cue is typically for my exiting loop. And as you can see, it's just an exiting loop that triggers automatically if I pass that hot cue. Now in my system, there are six sort of essential hot cues that I have in almost every track. The other two are reserved for other fundamentals. For this case, I've just had a second hot cue here for another buildup and that's right before the second drop. Having a buildup hot cue and a drop hot cue is really useful for when I want to transition quickly. So if I'm having two drop hot cues, having two buildup hot cues can also help me out. And the last one, I haven't assigned to anything yet. I can look throughout the track and figure out a good place to put it. But for now, this is sufficient for me. What you can do though, with these other hot cues that are reserved for just sort of general features is you can have hot cues for lyrical parts if you want to cut to an acapella or a part of the lyrics. You can have hot cues for sort of instrumental chops so that you can drum between them and create your own melodies on the fly. Any sort of use case that fits the track is ideal. So now with the track on the left here, I'm gonna apply that same system of hot cues to this track and I'm gonna break down the steps I do to build this sort of system. The first thing I like to do is I like to find the first drop in the track. Some controllers have it that the color you assigned will change the color of the hot cue. With some editing magic, I can show what an example that will look like. But for my controller, it's one static color. So I like to rely on the position I place the hot cue. The drops are always the third hot cue on the top row. So now I've set a hot cue just by simply going to the hot cue pad mode on my controller and pressing the hot cue right when I go to that beat. So every time I hit it, I'll go to that hot cue. What I like to do is I like to right click it. I change the color for some hot cues, but for my drops, I leave them the default green. And I just like to label it drop one. And then next up, I wanna find the breakdown and the buildup to the drop. Now the buildup to drop one is right before it. I know it's right there. And the breakdown, I have a toss up with this track starting from right at the beginning or a little bit later. And for this track, I wanna start right at the beginning because I kind of want to capture that vocal as well. So my first breakdown will be here. Nah, lay me down to sleep. And my buildup will be right here. Nah, lay me down to sleep. I pray Lord Maybe later on, I'll change up that hot cue. But for now, let's leave it like this. And again, I like to apply my system. And that being, I change the color and I rename it to the comment that fits the hot cue. Last up for the top row is the second breakdown. And I can pretty much guess that it's gonna happen right after the first drop. This does sound like the breakdown, but just by looking at the waveform, I can tell that this is another buildup that leads into a similar sounding drop. Right here. So for now, I'm gonna move forward again until this drop ends. And I think that's the hot key I wanna set. Yeah, that's definitely the start of the second breakdown. So with my four first hot cues set, I'm now left with an additional four that I can set to whatever use case I'd like. I do like to have that outro loop, so I like to start and grab that next. And I'll find a place that will loop nicely. So about after two more bars here. And this seems to be looping just fine. So I'll set that and I'll rename it to outro loop. And for the outro loops, I like to keep the color the same, but I also like to tick this little looping icon so that it becomes an auto loop. So now I'm left with three additional hot cues that I can figure out where I wanna put. I can again put it on vocal chops if I'd like, but I think I wanna reserve it to the same use case I put here because I believe there is a drop here that is either a faux drop that's something different or has a lot more energy. So I think the second buildup should be around here. Yeah, you can hear that hi-hat coming in. And I believe it builds up into a sort of second drop that's a lot different to the first one. And it does, and I want to definitely capture that so I have a lot more versatility. And just like that, we've set up the same system that we use universally for all tracks to this track. And it only took a couple of minutes. So now I can pretty confidently jump around the track to either the drops, of the buildups, 
to the outro loop, all that areas that I deem very important in just a click of a button. So that's gonna do it for this episode of DJ Essentials. And I just wanna apologize for not getting an episode out last week. I was feeling a bit under the weather in the first part of the week and the second part of the week, things picked up and I had a lot of other things on my plate that I needed to deal with. But for this week, I plan to release an additional episode than normal because the next topic that we're gonna talk about follows pretty much neck and neck with cue points. And that's mixing sort of freestyle-ish where you don't really plan a set but you plan out your tracks. So if you enjoyed the episode, be sure to like and comment and subscribe and turn on notifications for future releases. Thank you so much for watching and I've been Zeeshan.